Do you know Dr. Bill Williams? What went on past him? Hello, would you please introduce yourself and tell us what you do? Yes, uh, Brendan, uh, my name is Dr. Bill Williams. I'm a uh, global ambassador in on Passive. I am a retired dentist. I practiced 47 years here in Stone Mountain and then Swanee, Georgia for all of my career. I started in 1975 and I finished oh, wow. in 2023 being treating active patients. So I said, what can I do and have fun afterwards? And I said, well, I want to continue being a rep for ASEA. So I was doing that for a while yeah. and I was finishing up. ASEA is a health product. And so that was going along very good. And I was, was getting to be um, an international spokesperson for them as I was going up the ranks. But somewhere along the line, I met a lady, a dentist in Dublin, Ireland named Ann O'Donnell. And so Ann introduced me to On Passive. And I started looking at it and going, well, this will help me market because that was what it was promoted to be a marketing company. And I said, I'll help my ASEA business with the uh, knowledge and the expertise I get from on passive. Well, in a long story short form, I got to be a, a little more interested in the on passive story because it was wider and deeper than I had uh, expected. And it took my attention and I uh, started getting more um, levels of understanding about what on passive was doing. And as I did, I started speaking about it. And as I started speaking about it, uh, people started noticing and I became uh, a part of the leadership team that was in non-passive. Well, the ASEA people were kind of like, uh, we don't like that competition of two people repping two different companies. So they said, you make a decision. Do you want to go with ASEA? Do you want to go with non-passive? Because you can't do both. So uh, I looked at the opportunity and I, I uh, said, well, I probably will be healthier if I take the ASEA, but I'll be wealthier if I go with on passive. So I decided to be a leader in on passive and still take the ASEA products and still be a rep, but not be a promoter nationally or internationally. Yes. So that's kind of the story of, of how I found on passive. And what I'm doing now is I'm building, um, awareness of uh, I'm passive among people who don't know about it. That's my goal. And as we go forward with our product line, then uh, I'll be sharing that with people all over the globe. That's wonderful. And kind of answers my next question, but is there anything else you want people to know about how you got started with on passive? Yeah, you know, I was I was uh, watching the videos, learning a bit from uh, the early uh, videos that Ash made and uh, Dan, Marty, and Mike were on some of the webinars, and I I started learning, and I, and I said, you know, this is exactly what people in my profession need is a second income. You need a multiple source of income these days, not just one. So I said, well, it's, it's passive. It can be done without any effort. The way we promote it is that on passive does all the work. You just basically have to be a member and sign up to be a member. And so I said, this will work for people. And I made a video and that video was seen by uh, some of our leaders and they promoted it to Ash and Ash saw it. So that's when Ash uh, invited me to be on the leadership he called me the summer of 2020 and we had a conversation and um, I asked him, I said, at the end of it, I said, where are we going with this? What's, what's the thing we're going to do? Why should I join on passive? And, uh, you know, he said, the stars are the limit. We're, we're going places. And he said, alluded to uh, space things. He liked space. I didn't know it at the time. He was a space junkie. But it, it was yeah. interesting that he was mentioning things in space. 
So I, I've always been on the watch for what's coming from a um, passive related to space. Was it something he was planning or was it just his interest to follow what's going on in space? So that was kind of an interesting point. A little while later, I uh, had an opportunity to introduce Ash down in Orlando. I went down and introduced him to a friend of mine that I've been working with already, Dr. Kenor Shaw. And Dr. Shaw was putting together a massive number of doctors around the world so that they could band together to support patients. And the patients would be able to take control of their health care. And that was kind of a goal we had. So that was, that was useful. And when I introduced uh, Dr. Shaw to Ash, it's kind of like two giants meeting. And it was, mm -hmm. it was kind of fun to see them talking about the future and their goals and all that. So, oh, I, yes. I enjoyed that part. And then uh, I think the next time I got involved was I went up to uh, Boston with a group of the leaders and we, we kind of announced the, the start of what we were doing at the Burj Khalifa, how we were going to come into Dubai and be a major force with marketing. And that was, that was another time to be with Ash and the leadership. So I got to meet people like uh, Jeffrey Morlock and uh, Charles Osong and Julie and all the rest. A yeah, good time. Fun. Everybody likes to meet and talk to those guys. They're, they're kind of fun people, you know. Mm. But those are some of the main elements of what I would want people to know. Uh, I've always thought that I, my beliefs are important to me, and I don't want to uh, hide my beliefs from people. I believe uh, one of my purposes was to bring God into the workplace and just make him a normal part of what we do. And so we've always had uh, an open door to share with people about our beliefs and always help people succeed. We would pray for people in our dental office to, to be healed or less stressed. We would uh, start our meetings with a prayer. So things like that to show support for the spiritual side, not just the physical side. That's wonderful. I want to adopt that once I hire employees with the Mighty Miracle Men. Mighty Miracle Men. Yeah. And that, that's my company. I have a couple of different branches of our, like the Mighty Miracle Men Photography. We have been training. I just started coding. So the Mighty Miracle Man coding to create diagnostic tools for physicians so they can diagnose things easier. Absolutely good. You know, one of, one of the first uh, influencer podcasts, I do uh, about six podcasts a week and record them and put them up. And they're always in the O-Net network. Yes. They're always on YouTube and LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and StreamYard. Today, we've had them put up. One of the first ones I ever did was with a fellow in Texas who was a survivor of a stroke. And he had a podcast nationally speaking to people about um, all kinds of things. And uh, he's, he's a good example of people just like yourself who've risen beyond and survived physical things that happen. And they have a national footprint. So um, you, you might want to link up with this guy because, you know, you guys have a lot in common and your audience would probably love to be knowing about each other. Well, I connected with you from my last interview with Manu Miller. Oh, yeah. So now I need to connect with the reason you said. You can do that. You can. But I'll be glad to put you in touch with these guys that I talked to in Dallas. And uh, you never know where that'll take things. That's awesome. Thank you. So, 
want one thing and then you want people to know about you and what you do. One thing about me that and I want people to do. One thing about me that I want people to know that I do. Yeah. I'm a father of two boys and two grandchildren, a girl and a boy. And uh, they were born in England, my grandkids. They moved here to the U.S. recently. So we've enjoyed having two young kids in the house for the first time in, you know, maybe 35 years. That's my, wonderful. My children are 30 or 41 and 43. So having little ones in the house was quite a change. Quite a change of diapers, you might say. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. So, what's one piece of advice that you want to leave people with other than go to a non passive? In the description. Yeah, I got to join on passive is the first thing you ever do from here out. If mm. anybody's listening to this, always. Um, I would say, um, you know, live by some good rules, like some good quotes that people say. I think education is the key to growth. So if you follow three rules or three quotes of note, I like the term quotes of note because they're, they're like meaningful to me. Learn by applying the wisdom of the ages, wisdom of those who left legacies. So I have three people that I would mention or three quotes that I would talk about. The first one is a dentist that was my main mentor, Dr. Omar Reed. And he said, and I use this all the time, if it's been done, it's probably possible. Mm. So don't limit yourself just because you don't know it's possible doesn't mean it's not possible. Now that that leaves the door open for a lot of things, right? If it's been done, that's like somebody's already proved it. Not like you have to suspend your belief. You just have to do it because it's possible. Another guy who was kind of before that said, whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe he can achieve. And you know who that came from. Of course, that was Napoleon Hill in his famous book, over a century ago called Think and Grow Rich. And so if you can conceive it in your mind, conceive means, you know, bring it into uh, conception. Yes. Then you believe you can believe that it can happen. Then you can actually achieve it. So you create by thinking about it and put it to work. All inventions are conceived before they're actually created. Exactly. I love that book. And the last one is from the good book. And uh, Matthew quotes Jesus when he says, ask and you will be given, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open to you. So a lot of times people fail to ask. They never have because they didn't ask. They didn't seek to, you know, they just kind of stayed in one place. They didn't grow. So, Getting education is growing, is seeking. And then finally knocking. You might be at the destination, but you don't try to open the door. You got to have the key to open the door. Mm. So if you can find the key and open the door, maybe somebody else will open if you actually knock. So you have to take action, the action step. The door may be available to you. You might not have the key. Somebody else may have the key, mm. but you have to do the knocking. That's a good point. That's the point that I wanted to leave with everybody that uh, take action. That's wonderful. Thank you for your time, Dr. Bill. I hope it's been useful. I hope all your friends in the Mighty Men Network will take advantage of uh, believing they can do it. Yeah. Um, dream, believe, and achieve. Take action. Take a step. Move forward. Yes. Mm.
I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you again. Okay. I'm glad we got together, Brendan. It's been a good time. Thanks for letting me be on your network, and I look forward to seeing you many times in the future. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Adios. Auf Wiedersehen. Daranara. So, we got Spanish, German, and what else? Ah, uh, Japanese. Japanese. That's on my list to learn now. Konnichiwa. Aso, sayonara. <laughs> See you.